The heart of Mountain Mind Tricks is the breakthrough session. My first breakthrough session was beyond any healing I could have ever imagined. The rapid transformation that happens in the breakthroughs blows my mind every time. Your perception is a projection. In other words, what you see in your reality around you is a projection of what you believe about yourself. Anytime you wish something was different in life, I teach you how to look inside and find the solutions. My favorite part about the breakthrough session is when we change something on the inside, the holograms around you start to change too. And you know, what do I mean by holograms? Well, you gotta read the book Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot to fully get this idea. But basically the synchronicities, the people, the events start lining up in ways you never thought possible when you become realigned after a breakthrough session. You know, I love seeing the mind-body energy connection in action too. Your mind is stronger than anyone has ever told you because your thoughts and feelings affect your cells first and foremost. Check out the work of Bruce Lipton in the Biology of Belief. Bruce breaks down how your thoughts and feelings affect your cells through basic biology experiments. The breakthrough session upgrades your beliefs and reduces stress in your nervous system, which means you're upgrading the way your genes are expressed in your cellular biology. So I want you to go to mountainmindtricks.com and schedule a free discovery session to learn more. We have so many new opportunities here at Mountain Mind Tricks right now. I'm so excited. I'm so stoked on this. I want you to go to the website and check out the Leadership Accelerator if your mental health is affecting your performance on the line and at home. I want you to check out the energy session if you want to experience the healing power of ancient Hawaiian shamanism. We also support wildland firefighters during the fire season who are on light duty due to injury or mental health. In the reset program, we offer the breakthrough session half off because we know you can't get your overtime. Upcoming this winter, we have the group coaching program, Expanding Situational Awareness, such an amazing group of folks. We come together for transformation, for meditation, for going deep into release work together. Such a beautiful process, and it includes a mini breakthrough session. So I want you to go to mountainmindtricks.com and learn more about our programs. All right, guys, the Wildland Wellness Foundation has done it again. We have four sacred healing retreats this winter happening in Mexico and stateside. Are you a current or former wildland firefighter looking for alternative healing? You may want to check out wildlandwellnessfoundation.com to see more information about the upcoming retreats. In Mexico, we have a group of indigenous healers that come together for a five-day experience that will change your life forever. An amazing group that really embodies the wisdom of their sacred teachers and they share that with you through your own healing process with so many modalities so many uh, plant teachers massage reiki uh, mental emotional release it really is a holistic way of healing stateside we have a group of integrative practitioners that bring together hawaiian shamanism sound healing and sacred ceremony in a way that rewires your nervous system back to health and what I mean by that is that the sound in the sacred ceremony just completely dissolves the limiting beliefs, the negative emotions, the things that are stuck in your nervous system. The sound is so healing and so powerful, it really is a game changer. So I want you to go to wildlandwellnessfoundation.com and schedule a discovery session to learn more about the sacred retreats this winter. Welcome everybody to the podcast. I am so excited for today. We have an amazing person, Lisette King. She's a master practitioner of NLP and hypnosis and mental emotional release and of course, Huna. And uh, we also have another guest, Coco McKenzie. She's a psychedelic therapist and sound, uh, sound technician or sound healer. And I'm just so excited because these two have been mixing modalities and creating powerful transformation. And so could one of you, maybe Lisa, could you introduce yourself and let us know what was your journey like into service? Like how was there a transition? Was there something that happened in life that made you want to help other other people? 
And, and after you kind of go through your journey, I would love to hear from Coco as well. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. Um, I took the long way here and um, I was very lost for a long time through my 20s. Um, I like to say I was a non-player character for our gamers out there. Uh, there was, it really felt like I was just going through the motions. I was in a trance with life um, and really treating myself in not good ways, um, not knowing how to deal with my own personal trauma. I discovered uh, personal development, which led me to NLP in 2013. Um, loved it, had a wonderful experience with it, and then put it down for a while. I found um, Dr. Matt, NLP.com, um, in 2017, and that changed everything. Doing the breakthrough process was probably the most profound process I'd ever been through, and I'd been through so many seminars, and that one, yeah, it just really got me to take control of my health, take control of my life. And I wanted to serve it. I wanted to pay it forward. I wanted, I found that this was the medicine I wanted to serve to people. So I've been doing that consistently since 2017. And um, recently this year, I started working with Coco and she's been bringing me um, clients, been doing breakthrough sessions with them and she's been serving them medicine. And that combination has been prolific, like we see the grandest transformation over three days. So yeah, I'll toss it over to Coco. <laughs> I love your story. <laughs> yeah. Non-player. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm Coco McKenzie and stoked and honored uh, to be invited here and into the conversation. So thank you, Thomas and Thank you everyone who's a part of the community and cares. Um, as I said, I'm Coco McKenzie. I'm a psychedelic therapist and sound practitioner and have been in this type of work, um, alternative healing modalities for nine years. Um, and my journey in some ways has been lifelong and inevitable and in other ways was very accidental. Um, my early childhood did set the stage for a lot of the ways that I work now. Um, but it was when I was 22 ish. I'm, I'm timelines is very hard for me to follow. <laughs> um, so my timeline could be way off, but it was about 22 and my life crumbled. Um, I was pursuing a lawsuit against my rapist at the time, and I just recently divorced where I come from a incredibly strict and limiting religious background and divorce is the ultimate sin. So when I made that choice, I knew that I was changing my entire life and didn't know how it would go. But it was enough to, I was willing to take the risk. Um, but through that divorce and then the rape and lawsuit, I described myself as a zombie. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the Walking Dead mm -hmm. reference. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, for those who aren't gamers but like the show. <laughs> um, yeah, I wasn't functioning. I wasn't doing well. And it was the second time that I was hospitalized for stress-induced hemorrhaging that my life got shook. Um, and I realized after that hospital visit that I was either going to die this miserable and broken, or I was going to give my life to try to figure out how to become myself again. And I went with the latter. Um, I left my corporate job and got passed around from healer to teacher to medicine carrier to wisdom keeper and found what I was looking for uh, and a lot, a lot, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I returned home years later, 
everyone just started sending me their daughters and their wives and their girlfriends. Um, because at that time in my practice, I'd only worked with the sexually abused and um, female, female bodied uh, victims of assault. So I did that for a few years. And then from there, uh, Dr. Martine Polanco, who founded Crossroads, which is an addiction treatment center, um, discovered my work and brought me on to his team where I helped develop the therapeutic, um, spiritual and emotional side of a curriculum that served 5-MEO DMT and Ibogaine to retired Navy SEALs. Um, we would do this in Mexico. And I was a part of his team for a period of time and learned so much and was and am eternally grateful for that experience. And then as of now, um, I'm just working in my own, developing my own practice again. And uh, as Lisette mentioned, we, we serve those who are ready, willing, and have a brave enough heart to, to lean in and dive off the deep end because what we do is remarkably transformational and really requires people to be absolutely ready um, for really big results. So that's that's my background and how I fell, fell into it. Well, thank you both so much for sharing from the from your heart and and for really letting us know like who you are. Like I really, really appreciate your story and just thank you so much for being here and and just the energy uh, between you two is so powerful. I can just feel it that whoever you come in contact with has this remarkable transformation. And, and, and I guess I would love to just start digging a little bit deeper into the different medicines, because I think, and I'm curious, Coco, like, you know, what medicines are your choice and why? Because I think there's so many out there that people hear about like the ayahuasca or the the bufo or the psilocybin or MDMA, like there's so many different medicines and they, in my experience, they're, they're, a, they're a different access point to the same medicine. But I just wanted to kind of ask you your, your thoughts on this. On what medicines I use and why? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question in circles. We'll take the biggest <laughs> circles and start to loop in tighter and tighter yeah. and more specific. How about that? Yes, please. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm blessed and trained to serve Nino Santos, the golden teachers, uh, the children, mushrooms, psilocybin. Um, I work with that medicine specifically because they're life givers. Psilocybin takes us back to a neuroregenerative state of when we were teenagers. And with that, it gives us the opportunity to build new neurons. If you build new neurons, that gives you the opportunity to have new thoughts, new thoughts, new beliefs, new beliefs, new choices, new choices, patterns, behaviors, you like it, it is the, it is a real life opportunity to see tangible change and to get divine assistance through sacred medicines that Mother Earth herself has given us. Um, I also work with MDMA, um, who in my relationship and practice with her, we refer to her as the goddess of wisdom and compassion. Because when we start to work with these molecules, there are your hormones and chemicals are altered. It takes us into our subconscious brain. It mutes the default mode network, the part of us that's the control freak, skeptic, um, the part of us that knows life to be the way that we know life to be. So it, these medicines turn down the volume on that enough, allow us to, in indigenous terms, step across the line meaning pull back the veil, get back into more of who you are. And, 
MDMA in particular, once we can get your nervous system calm enough through all the other therapeutic modalities that we utilize in session, your amygdala is no longer pumping fear, stress, um, all these fight or flight responses. And what's left there in your limbic brain is love and compassion. And all of this healing work that we do absolutely requires that to be present. Otherwise, the change is forced. At best, you're going to get an outward compliance, but an inner rebellion, which only produces more of this lack of self-trust and self-rapport. And the more lack of self-trust we have, the more lack of self-worth we have. So we, I, serve the children and the goddess often together um, so that we're we're doing the therapy on rocket fuel and with divine assistance. Um, I also serve Bufo, uh, known as the God Molecule, 5-MeO-DMT. Um, but that is a very, very specific medicine and specific initiation. And I will also say with everyone present, about 75% of clients that come to me with that request, I do not serve. It is a strong medicine that if people do not have certain mental and emotional tools coming in and the right community support coming out, this molecule can change someone's life so much that they don't always successfully integrate. So it's, I carry it with much reverence. Um, and it, it also drastically changed mine and thousands and thousands of other people's lives mm -hmm. throughout the, the ages, not just, um, I'm not only referring to my clientele. Um, and then Ibogaine. Ibogaine is, she takes you through the seven hells. She's known as the addiction breaker. And that is a very potent medicine. I've only ever served that on a team. So it's not something that I take on individually. Um, I would do that work with the mission within. Um, so that's a, that's a bit about why I choose the medicines. Um, yeah, I think I actually circled all of it in there. Did I answer the questions? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So beautiful. And, and, yeah, you know, from my experience, it's it's uh, I really admired ayahuasca and grandmother and and you know, I guess for me going back, if I look back, I think my first psilocybin experience, I was a teenager and more of like a not a good setting, more of a party, like it was it was just not a good deal, but it still had profound changes for me, and so it's kind of been, gosh, at least fifteen years of of use of like here and there, but I, it's coming more and more into my life. And I feel like the psilocybin specifically is, it resonates with me more. It feels more earthy. It feels more loving. And I feel like sometimes for like the ayahuasca, I had a really beautiful experience and then a really hard experience. And, and that's, it was, it was amazing and great. I just, I'm like, the the Nino Santos is really it fills my heart like that's the one that calls me the most and so uh it, it's just I I love the mushrooms you know and and sometimes I wonder you know how you know if we look at the cordyceps that you know go into the ant's brain and make them kind of go all over the the ant pile and then they explode with other mushrooms right like it makes me wonder how much of the the Nino Santos consciousness are we spreading? Like, and I think it's really kind of the same idea that this medicine is spreading through us in such a beautiful way and, and just creating a wider neural network through humanity. And it's just so powerful to me. So I just have so much respect and honor just to be in your presence, Coco. So thank you for being, thank you for what you do. That's what oh, I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you for having me and, and um, caring about the work and wanting to share it. I can also say the mother 
ayahuasca, her gift to us, and her gift to us is different. All medicines are, right? When you go see a, a, a Western MD and he prescribes you medications, that's based on individualized symptoms, or it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Every medicine, every essence has a different gift and the mother is irreplaceable mm. and irrecreatable, unrecreatable, whatever the word is. The children, from a therapeutic standpoint, from just my perspective, which I'm just one human, so you can take that as, you know, it, take that with a grain of salt. What I've found that the children allow for that I've not seen in particularly with ayahuasca, again, this isn't a medicine I serve, so I'm, I'm speaking from a very limited understanding. Um, but what I love about working with the children is it is their connection. We can, we dose in a way that is therapeutic that allows you to step across the line into more of who you are while remaining intact enough to be able to experience yourself from a detached but ultimately compassionate place so we can play with therapeutics that allow us to bring in this west the, all the science and intelligence that the western civilization through therapy has created and merge it with these timeless teachers mm -hmm. that also ping our neocortex and and who we are in this day and age coupled with our ancestral intelligence that is alive in all of us so we can bridge modern therapeutics with ancient rites, rites of passages with these medicines while keeping people engaged enough to know that they're co-creating and nothing is ever taking over them and they always have choice my experience with ayahuasca was, and my experience with other medicines as well, is the gift of it is you're getting taken on a ride. You're going <laughs> to sit down and drink your drink your juice and you're going to listen to her. And thank God. And what I love about the children is it's far more interactive, which for a lot of people, the one of the main reasons and their highest... Um, intention for coming is for peace and peace comes through self-trust and mm. we have to be able to have these experiences from in a way that is explainable to ourselves and with these other medicines that take you so much into your subconscious the subconscious doesn't speak in the same language as your neocortex the subconscious speaks in sensation and symbol so when people come back from other medicine journeys and they just, their lives are destroyed or they can't integrate at all or nothing makes sense. So it didn't really mean anything to them. It might be because of the language barrier between the medicines in your subconscious brain and what was able to seep through and make sense in this day and age. And so that is really why I continue to work with the children and, and MDMA because it it takes you far enough while also driving your own car. Mm, that's so beautiful. I love that. And yes, I definitely had that experience of, uh, I remember as soon as I drink my cup, a couple cups, I was thinking, okay, buy the ticket, take the ride. And here we go. And there's just a hundred percent surrender to grandmother. And this, that's the only way. Mm -hmm. It's the only way through is 100% surrender. And what a beautiful lesson that is by itself. And, uh, yeah. Yes. And if, if for people who have a lot of trauma and surrender is real far, like a big ask, I think it can be a barrier to entry. And mm. the psilocybin generally, if you're working with the right practitioner, can be like walking. Can, it's like putting your toe in the water instead of jumping out into the deep end with sharks. Mm. Not that ayahuasca is sharks, but that people can... People can, the fear can keep people from jumping in the water. It's yeah. panthers and snakes. Yeah. Panthers and snakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Which we're going to talk about snakes. I, I really want to talk about snakes here in a little bit. But first, <laughs> okay. first uh, I, 
I wanted to ask Lisette, like, one, how did you come into the medicine? And also, how how are you blending, like, these retreats with mental emotional release? And, like, mm-hmm. is it before ceremony? Is it after? Is there integration day to, like, maybe do some other NLP techniques? Like, yeah. what's this kind of look like as a practitioner? Mm, thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, so the retreats start with day one is an, is an NLP breakthrough. And so they sit with me for as long as it takes, you know, uh, sometimes uh, now that I have incorporated HUNA, the days have gotten shorter. Mm -hmm. So, um, they are as short as six hours. Sometimes it's, it flows into the next day, you know, depending on how, how much the, um, client is working through and needs to be heard, um, we've gone as far as like 10, 12 hours on a client. Yeah. So it's, how, well, I'll start with how I found found it. Um, serendipity, <laughs> first and foremost. Um, Coco and I met while I was on a five-month cross-country honeymoon with my wife, and we met at a friend's house. And there was this soul resonance, like my heart just felt like it wanted to jump out of its chest. Like, I'm like, who are you? Why are you doing this to me? You know? And, um, and we, and it, the feeling was mutual. It was amongst the three of us. We're like, we're meant to be together. And, um, uh, Coco has a business partner who was also there and we just all like vibed and we met on that day. Um, Britt and I continued our cross country honeymoon and the Pacific Northwest was calling us. So we were, we were in the 3d of like, gosh, what do we do next? Like, where, where do we land? And uh, I just had the download, like, let's just call Coco. She had just moved up there. Let's see. Um, let's just transfer enthusiasm by letting her know we're coming. And we have this, uh, I call her up and she's so excited. She's got her little champagne glass. Like what's the good news. And uh, we told her, we're like, we're moving up there. We're moving to to the Pacific Northwest. And she was, well, I just found a house. And I'm like, you're welcome to come land here. And um, it was, the offer was one month, you know? And so we landed here and the the day after uh, she welcomed us with a ceremony of her medicine and I was floored. Um, the amount of healing I did in those six hours. Um, yeah, as you and I know, the unconscious mind presents the memories when they're ready for resolution. And in those six hours, I was having memories that were dormant come to the surface and knowing what I know about the unconscious mind, I was like, this would not be coming if I wasn't ready, despite the fact that I had like internal shaking going on. And um, the medicine took me through and the sounds guided me to my own healing. And in that moment, I, you know, at the end of it, I just got down on my knees and I was like, thank you. May I share my medicine? May I share a breakthrough with, with you? And she said, yes. And the rest is history. She she <laughs> sat in a she sat in a the breakthrough with me. She changed my life, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Give the woman eight hours. <laughs> I highly recommend. Yeah. We we served each other medicine and both our lives have never been the same. And so when she, after experiencing the breakthrough, wanted to bring it to her clients, I was like, absolutely. So we formatted it. Um day one, they sit with me in a breakthrough, very therapeutic. And the way I call it is we're getting your left brain ready for what your whole brain is about to explode into. (laughs) You know, with NLP, it is very linguistic. It is uh, speaking to your common knowledge. It's using the conscious mind to talk to the unconscious. We're using your linguistics to reprogram you. And as all of that sets the foundation and we're, you know, installing the what's possible and the change and what's going to occur. There's a lot of um, foundation set for your life's going to be different once we release, once we release what the limiting beliefs, when we let go of fear, anger, sadness, you know, shame, guilt, embarrassment, whatever it is you're working on, when we release those things, um, now you can bring in the light. Now you can work with the medicine in such a different way. And 
yeah, like I said, the, the, at, at the end of day one, they're sparkling. By the end of the day three, like some, some people are just unrecognizable. Like yeah. they are, the, and they're the most themselves they've been. Like they have a childlike wonder sometimes at the end of those three days. I'm like, wow, this just, I, I'm, every time we do this, I'm humbled. Yeah. yeah. And I allow ourselves to get just as much out of the clients because we believe there's only one of us here and we're all connected and we're all doing the work. Um, and it's remarkable. I usually tell people to view day one as a gardening day. This is the day that we lift the hood to your, um, not lift the, this is the day that we, we get to know your computer and your programming. Um, and we find the original wound, that first seed that has developed roots and, and grown and affected all other plants in the garden, all other areas of your life. And we extract that seed so that for day two and three, we plant new seeds in its place. And we spend the next 48 hours in expanded states of consciousness, watering and cementing that those new beliefs, those new programs, and those new plants, so to speak. Um, and the, the results are undeniable. And I, we always tell people this is as life changing as you want it to be. Mm, wow. I love this so much, so much power. And, and, you know, I got to resonate with Lisette here of like, when I went to master prac and I went through the breakthrough session, like at that point in my life, I was doing better, but I, like, I was a wreck, like the year, like two years leading up to master prac. I mean, my whole life was in shambles and sitting there and like you're saying Coco like finding that root cause you know I was really good at avoiding and trying to like get past the practitioner and then um, you know I was, I was trying to trick them into doing a breakthrough session on career when it was really like you know it was actually more of a, a personal development or a spiritual issue going on and he called me out on it right of course as a master practitioner is going to do and when he said the limiting belief, like the core wound thing, I lost it. I mean, it was so like ineffable of like my whole body was just Mm -hmm. somebody found out what it was, you know? And then Mm -hmm. when we released it, it was the second I opened my eyes was like, I have to do this for firefighters. Like it it just, there's no, like, this is my path forward. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I think one of the most transformational points of my entire life was that first breakthrough session and and I think other points of my life that have been just as transformational was psilocybin and so putting these together is so so amazing like it's so inspiring and and I'm curious Lisette like in in Coco when you've gone through this process and this is just my take on it uh, because, you know, we've been doing something similar with the firefighters down in Mexico and working with ayahuasca is that I, I think the breakthrough session before the medicine, it mm-hmm. kind of softens the ride into it. And so it's easier. And like you said, let's say like it, it allows you to connect with the light so much faster. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of going through all of that release work. And of course, there's going to be probably more. But it's not like this. You're not walking into all the shit. You know what I mean? And and I want to get your take on this because I think to me, I guess the best way I can think of it is that it it softens the ride, right? Yeah, absolutely. I I feel all release work. Um, Going back to, we we just came back from Huna, Thomas and I, and the way they describe um, you, you must face it before you can bring in the light like it, you to walk your path to live on your purpose you you have to release the black bags you have to release the baggage and it lets you do that and uh, i'm now in the process of um keeping maintenance like making sure i do breakthroughs every six months or something, because it's such an important part of the, the, the cycle of life. The growth is uh, circular, you know, like you, we, we think we're, we're like, oh, we solved that problem. We let it go. And then it's just like, no, we have elevated and 
cyclically it, the lesson comes back. And so the maintenance is important and, and the maintenance with the medicine is important to sit with both medicines. Um, once you discover this work, it's hard to go back. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Once yeah. you discover how easy and quick it can be, you're like, what? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So true. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so I was just going to say, um, even coming back from, from Huna, I sat with the medicine again and what it did for me was it elevated me at this new level. All the release work we did um, last week on the island just prepared me for another level of blast off. And it was, it was prolific. So I find um, it, we say we don't serve medicine that we're not willing to take. So it's, it's very important that doing a breakthrough following up within the next few weeks um, to sit in ceremony is, is, so, is something that um, I have been doing regularly and, and Coco as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, there is a, one of the barriers to entry on this type of medicine work, specifically psychedelics, um, you might find it too in NLP, but I just know more about psychedelics. Yes. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, but there's a fear. There's a fear of, you know, most of us have emotions and thoughts and feelings and beliefs you know, tapes going on in our head throughout the day that we just constantly push down and distract from. And the bill always has to get paid. So either we're avoiding and we're just racking up a bill. Um, and for a lot of us, you know, we get to 40, 50 years old and we finally, the, the things start to kind of come apart in our life and we hit rock bottom or get really close to it. And we're like, all right, I've got to change the system here. Excuse me. But that fear is often because we're afraid to face ourselves. And the other problem with people, and so there's, there's, there's half, you know, let's say that half the group's coming with that fear. And then there's another large subset of people that come to do this kind of work and get into spiritual bypassing. Mm. And what I found in mine and Lisette's work together is this really beautiful middle ground because you, from a sober and a tr a truly sober place, you, you, you walk yourself back into who you are and you sit with yourself and lovingly reparent, re-coach, re-program. Um, you're, you're aware of all of it. You, you lift your own weights. You earn that self-respect. And so walking into the medicine the next day, it's far more gentle because you're not worried to face yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. We already did. And you already know that everything you're feeling, experiencing, hearing is already alive in you. And you have the practical, tangible, and evidence-based tools based on all the work you did for 10 hours the day before with me and Lisette. You know you can lift that weight again. And now you're doing it from this loving, expanded place on rocket fuel. So it also prevents the spiritual bypassing because you did this work by yourself sober. And now we're just re, um, we're continuing to lift our weights with support, but nothing is happening to you and nothing is happening without your full choice and participation. And I think that too is another reason why we have the results that we do. Yeah, that's so powerful. I love that. I love that so much. And, and I think what, I want to go back to something that Lisa said is that, um, or one of you said it, the, the oneness, how really there's, we're doing breakthrough sessions on ourselves or serving medicine to ourselves in a cosmic way. And I resonate with that so much because I feel like anytime I do a breakthrough session with anybody, I'm really doing a breakthrough session on myself and I will find that whatever they release, I release too. And it's just like, so doing these breakthrough sessions all the time with clients, it's like, oh my God, the exponential growth is so powerful. And, and it, there's so many times where I'm like, 
like you said, Lisette, like I really thought I faced that. And then it comes up in a client's breakthrough session. I'm like, wow, I guess I got to go deeper, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's such a, I just, as a practitioner, I, I guess I'm curious for you, Coco, is this something that comes up in your work as well is that in ceremony, you'll see things in clients that resonate with you. You're like, okay, now I have to release this too. Oh, very much so. (laughs) Very, very much so. Um, Once we've turned down the volume um, on your neocortex, your compartmentalizer, your separator, once we turn down the volume on that and we're listening to a different radio station, that being your subconscious brain, you experientially realize we're not separate. And the anger, frustration, fear, pad, fear, sadness, guilt, um, all those that I have and I feel towards other, that means I have to feel it and hold it inside my sacred container first. So the I let every breakthrough and every retreat we do change my life. Um, and it's a lot of work. It, <laughs> it's, it is, it's a lot of work, the work that we do and how we show up mm. for people. But it is so rewarding because we see undeniably how the brain, once you're in the 95% of your computer, doesn't know the difference between remembering a past memory and the reason I have for the fear and the separation and the angst and the ugh. It it doesn't know the difference between re- me remembering that past and me remembering my future. So I love that I get to live my dream life and spend so much time in expanded states of consciousness, rewriting my old beliefs and remembering my future and who I'm becoming. Because the more time I spend in that, the more I can model that for myself, my internal family. In indigenous wisdom, they refer to all of their emotions as family members because it's easier once they're personified to be nice to them. (laughs) So I spend a lot of time internal and constantly doing what I can to catch myself to be grateful for that catch and to rewrite it in the future so that I am becoming more and more of the woman that I want to be every day. And each client we see brings more refinement for us. And we're like, yeah. here we go. Let's, let's do it. It's time to party. Yeah. Like I, I'm still learning this and thank God because yeah. there, I treat my, any negative emotion I have at this phase of my life, I treat them like a guide they are letting me know something future future paced that i don't currently see probably from a past trauma that if i don't re- if i don't get this lesson i'm going to walk into a landmine so i'm able to be a lot more gentle through all the work that we've done i've Lisette's told me in three official breakthroughs two for relationships and one for career and it's undeniable the change that we commit to by by committing to do our work so the last couple of years i had to quit coffee because coffee was like this liquid shot of anxiety for me like my heart would race i could focus intently but only for a couple hours and i would crash super hard and my sleep was so off i mean i would be wandering the universe until i don't know three in the morning before i finally got to sleep and then i had to get back out at a six or seven in the morning and i was groggy i was tired It just wasn't working for me. It's not that I was mad at coffee. I was just really disappointed. And so I ended up quitting coffee. And I've been searching for an alternative for a long time. And that's when I came across mud water. Mud water is this amazing, amazing tea. It's got masala chai in it. It's got cacao, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, reishi, cinnamon, turmeric, and Himalayan sea salt. And what's so amazing is that you feel the same energy, that same burst 
that you get from coffee, but it sustains all day. There's no crash, there's no headache, there's no dehydration. It's just this beautiful experience. And so yeah, I'm gonna say it, fuck your coffee. You gotta switch over to mud water because mud water will change your life. There's immune boosting properties, helps you focus with the lion's mane. There's one seventh of the caffeine compared to coffee. And so there's no jitters, there's no anxiety. It's just this beautiful experience with beautiful plants. So fuck your coffee. So if you want to try out mud water, I want you to go to mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water or go to the shop and click on the button. Again, that's mountainmindtricks.com slash mud water. So one of my favorite things about the mud water company is that they donate a percentage of their profits to the MAPS Institute. It's an organization that develops medical, legal, and cultural context for people to benefit from the careful uses of psychedelics. So the you know, MDMA Psychedelic Assisted Therapy Phase 3 trials, this is MAPS. And that's so important because there's been some amazing breakthroughs in the research with veterans and PTSD and uh, depression and all sorts of amazing things that they're doing. So it's so important to support this company. Oh, that's so powerful. Like, just, oh, I love this. Like, and, <laughs> and I guess for me too, there's, there's, I'm a very sensitive person to medicine. And I guess, you know, you, I know you haven't listened to the podcast. So, and I've told this story a whole bunch of times, but I'm going to go back just a little bit to give you some frame of, of, um, you know, basically what happened in, in my career is that my, my captain, my best friend, my supervisor, like passed away suddenly. And mm -hmm. it was this gigantic trauma for me that just cascaded into this health crisis, PTSD. I couldn't really work. I mean, it was just, I was a total wreck and I didn't really know what to do. And so I started meditating a lot and I started doing yoga and I started doing journaling, just things I had done in high school to kind of cope with some other stuff. And I found a meditation in a book and I'm not going to even repeat the book's name or where it came from, but I had a, I asked for it, but I, I had an accidental in some ways. I didn't know what I was asking for, but I had an accidental Kundalini experience that was so forceful and big and life shattering that when I came back, I was 10 times worse. Mm. And so mm. I really didn't know what to do. Um, and that's where my journey started. And so now, you know, I realized that I was blasted into space, into the universe and traveled all these places, a beautiful vision, really hard to integrate. And, and now you know, I guess after that, I would have these kundalini experiences for like six months. It was really hard, mm -hmm. really hard every night almost. And now it's, it's, it comes up sometimes, like I'll have a kundalini experience, but there's no force, there's no fear, there's no nothing like that. It's almost that like I get to go into medicine whenever I want to. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really, really powerful because I think some nights I just do so much work there all the time. And it's, it's almost like dreamscape, but it's definitely DMT land. You know? <laughs> yes. We, 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 know <laughs> we, know, we know what DMT land is like. Yeah. And, and I guess like I'm just sharing this because cause I want to go a little bit deeper into an experience. I want to just jam on this with you guys because... Um, I, I remember sitting in class and I was so excited to like talk to Lisette about this experience, but it just wasn't the right context is that the, my last ayahuasca experience, I got some really clear answers of like, I had this gut health issue and this skin issue that was going on for a long, long time. And grandmother told me, well, eat these specific foods, take these herbs, take this supplement for about 14 days and you'll be healed. Okay. So I did that and, and a little, we had you know, I had another um, psilocybin experience within those two weeks. And I could, as soon as it started getting stronger and stronger, I could feel these eyes on the back of my head. And it just like, it was like this snake head, like just erupting out of my 
head, basically. I was Mm -hmm. turning into a snake. And this snake rolled around and started eating my feet. And so the classic Ouroboros, right? The dragon Mm -hmm. eating itself. And so I was there being digested by a snake for hours. And it was, there was no fear or anything, but it was really, really intense for me, you know, to like go through this experience of being digested. And then I had this realization that the snake was teaching me how to digest my food. Oh, wow. And then I watched the snake or me start shedding its skin. And I realized it was teaching me how to regrow my skin. And then the snake kind of, at this point I dissolved into nothing. And there was like baby snakes inside, like inside of me. And they all spread out in like the four directions as in creations, like this rebirth process. Mm -hmm. And since then like the snake medicine i was like oh my god this is like either this is ayahuasca still working with me like maybe a month later or like this is some really powerful like animal guides which i work with a lot and that experience like my gut health my skin all that stuff's gone 100 percent gone um of course there was the physical follow-up and then the ceremony but like this is a classic psilocybin healing experience right if and I just want to get your take on this experience because this is something that one, I'm doing my own integration here a little bit with you guys live, which I think is really cool, but um, we all are, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, and I think, um, I just wanted to share this cause I don't think I've talked about this really extensively in the podcast yet of like, this was like, I don't know. It is just one of the most powerful experiences with uh, Nino Santos that I've ever had. And it was really, really big and important for me. Right. Mm -hmm. so I want to get your take on that yeah well I first I first want to thank you and honor you and applaud you for trusting the process um I found in integration work one of the things that I would say is most helpful is to catch our labels because whatever we tell ourselves is true Our words are law. And anything that is happening to you, you are doing to yourself. So by you acknowledging now that what used to be a painful, scary process, the spontaneous Kundalini awakening, is now a portal to your power and to your remembrance, congratulations. (laughs) way to show up and way to do it and way to not play victim and way to meet the moment. Um, Because medicine work will transform your life again, as much as you want it to. And the second we label something, we put it in a box, we say, oh, I got it. Then we cut off the flow of life. I'm still getting things from my first medicine journey because I'm, I put conscious effort to not say, I know what it was. This is what I got. I let it be an ever unfoldment. I let it teach me a medicine journey I did almost a decade ago. Still brings nourishment and nutrients and new perspective. So I just want to honor you for taking what was scary and making it a gift. Um... Thank you so much. In oh, there was something else I was going to say. What was your original question? <laughs> Just the the power or the I don't know. I don't even know if there was a question other than me sharing about the snake medicine that came so strong and how it was so healing of a physical issue, right? And I guess maybe the question is how often do you see things like that where maybe it's a physical or um a yeah, I guess more of a physical, like neuroplasticity thing that gets healed through through the work that you're doing. Often, yes, it's it's expected, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. People people come for their people come because they're tired of some problem, and they're tired enough to jump off the cliff. 
they're willing to try. They're willing to take responsibility for their own results to say, listen, I've tried everything else. I want to try this. It's important enough for me in my life. And when people are that ready, willing, and able, that is an energetic frequency that just by law is going to get matched. And when people come that open, they're willing to receive medicine, insight, new perspectives, um, new information. They're ready to receive it all. And we know truth by the way that it feels. No one can tell you that you didn't get eaten by a snake and that you didn't learn about transmutation, life itself, kundalini energy and healing. Like, if I told you right now, Thomas, that that didn't happen, it would that'd be like water off your back because you know something different. <laughs> Absolutely. It's more real than real, as, as we say, right? Exactly. So do we expect that when people come for this type of work that their prayers will be answered? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because your words are law. Your intention is the GPS you set and the car you get into. Like The only... The only thing that can stop people, in my opinion, I think one of the big reasons why people quote unquote don't get what they want is if they were white knuckling the experience. When we have our grip so tight that your your hand, your wrist is shaking and you're, you're white knuckling it, you're not, there's no way for you to receive anything. So you're saying you want a change, but really you're just saying that because you know you should be saying that. You don't actually want the change. In order for change to take place, we have to loosen the grip on the problem and open our our hand a little bit. And when people do that, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, sexual, ancestral healings that take place are limitless. Mm-hmm. But the medicine is not stronger than you and it won't override you. And it cannot force you to receive good things. You have to be, you have to create space in your life to want the good things. And just as you have, like you're, look at all that you've, all that you're receiving from just that one journey that you had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's just, thank you so much. And and I have one other, other question about, um, psilocybin and, and it's pertaining to that same experience too and in that uh, an experience before i had this vibration come over my body and that like at first i was get kind of like concerned like it feels like i'm like hypothermic like i was just shaking like um like it was such a like a tight wave of vibration like it was like my whole body was resonating i mean it was just like this Ohm sound like just my whole but i could feel it like i was shaking but i wasn't and so this 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 um other experience like the snake experience like i was i was really going into it i was like this is i want that again i really want that again and of course you know it didn't really happen again but i, I want to get your take on this vibration that comes into the body sometimes with the psilocybin like i'm sure you've seen that or heard it or experienced it like what is like the only thing that comes to mind for me, my personal reality is that I was so in tune with like the earth vibration. I could feel it. Um, that that's like the only way I can ex- describe it. But I'm curious, like on this vibration that comes in the body, like I want to get your perspective on that. Um, I'll answer that question in layers. <laughs> Because your perspective and your experience is inarguable. And um, we're wanting to share and paint other pictures and other possibilities for, for others, right? So for your experience specifically, I would say um, congratulations. Congratulations, right? Like you stepped into the unknown, you let go of compartmentalization, you were willing to receive new information, and you experienced waves of life through your body and you labeled it well. Your nervous system 
has two main functions. It's either rest and repair, which is our is a normal state. However, unfortunately, Western psychology has now labeled your parasympathetic. So when we're in fight, flight, freeze, and people please or fawn, the Western psychology has now labeled those as normal emotions. My guess being because that's just where the majority of the population currently is. It is, however, not our intrinsic, natural, normal state. So, but again, more of the society is used to being in the parasympathetic response. So I'm going into that to kind of weave it in. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's doing Huna over here. (laughs) I'm seeing sign language symbols. I think she's trying to talk to me. (laughs) I'm guessing Wahaha Mama, right? (laughs) Yeah. Wow, you too. (laughs) We're geeking out here. Uh, yes. uh, it was it was a call to uh, help the Wi-Fi stay stay on. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for handling that for <laughs> us, putting us in a bubble for that. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> but with our extra strong Wi-Fi now, yes. Um, so it depends. People's experience largely depends on how they label things. How they label things depends on what part of their nervous system they're in. What part of their nervous system in largely depends on what part of their nervous system they're just used to being in. So you expelled, you expelled, you experienced these sensations in your body and you caught your label because you could have gone, oh shit, what is this? And then you're, you would have accidentally purposefully chosen to put yourself in fear. Therefore, your brain is going to have to produce those chemicals, those hormones, those body sensations. But what you did in that moment was you you labeled it well. You labeled it from a trusting place. And that is probably why it is able to successfully and continuously unfold in your life. I will say that when that the medicine is known to produce mystical type experiences, um, because we are mystical, it is just a matter of having a safe enough container and a space to remember that. And your body recognized that wherever you were, you took these substances that were able to assist you in walking back into your future, into your truth. So good job it's really really amazing right (laughs) and i also want to address the physical waves that people can have and the range of these my first suggestion is always to catch your thoughts so if people are on medicine either solo in a group or with a professional everything that's ever happened to you has happened inside of your container And while psychedelic therapy is, it's not just an intellectual process, it is a intelligent process. So there is truths that are deeper than our tiny human mind can understand that when we open ourselves up with these entheogens, which Entheogen directly translates to becoming the divine within. So when we become the divine within, things get unlocked that, as Lisette said, they're presented when they're ready to be healed. So people can also experience waves of sensation that range. It can be trauma release. It can also be an activation of superpowers. Again, it just depends on your label. Mm. So as long as you are in a safe container you know your intention, that the intention is irreplaceably important. And you have support. I would say whatever you feel, meet it with love. View it through the lens of love, program it and call it love. Again, keeping your own personal trauma background in mind. And of course, this is with guidance. Um, because. I myself have gone through waves where I'm 
cathartic and shaking and puking and crying and shitting and yelling mm-hmm. and hitting and like but that was my highest expression and i was able to experience all of that from a witnesser consciousness place knowing that it was my highest expression to expel that energy from my container because i no longer want to have it poisoning my root system my plants mm-hmm. So there are healthy ways to move through everything. It sounds like your particular experience was uniting and this resonance and this energy through was good. You labeled it well, you you made it so. But when we work with these deep therapeutic modalities, anything can come up. So I always suggest no matter where you are in your path with the divine, with entheogens. Do it in community. Do it with support. Because while we are conscious co-creators, for those who don't have the self-rapport or enough tools, the medicine can feel like it hijacks you. So physical, mental, emotional support is is really important, in my mm. opinion. So powerful. Thank you. Thank you so much for illuminating that a little more for me. And, and how much more time do you two have? Because I want to keep going here a little bit. I, I got time to jam, man. We're, we're, we, we're, we set aside some time. I think yeah. Coco has some appointments this afternoon, but we can flow. Okay. Yeah, I wore my sweatpants for this. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, me too. Yep. Yep. I've got my mud water and my sweatpants. And yeah. Like, I'm, I'm anchored in. Anchored in. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. We're here for this, man. This is awesome. So I do want to shift gears a little bit. And and I think something something that was illuminating for me in Huna was one of our teachers said that you know in the hawaiian culture there was there was plant medicines there's like ava there's things like that and the idea was to use these until you could do it on your own but Mm -hmm. more than that we just use energy it's just faster and easier that was kind of like what was explained and then we went through nine days of well pretty much plant medicine i don't know what your experience was like lisette but for me i was like yeah. Every night was like, whoa, I really yeah. feel like I've been in ceremony all day. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And we use energy instead of plant medicine. And um, neither ones, it's it's all just a different access point to me. But I do want to spend some time here to like jam on the Huna stuff. Mm-hmm. And how, like, how do you see this? integrating into your practice even more with the medicine Mm. like with what you're doing now but also like dude what was huna like because for me (laughs) holy shit like i don't that was the most transformational nine days of my life like i've had a lot of crazy experiences and that was like whoa there was some stuff we got to talk about Yes. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity because I've been meaning to download with Coco about Huna and we've been, yes. we, we've been swamped with clients. Like it's a gr- <laughs> great problems to have. Yeah. However, we haven't been able to um, sink in. So being able to, to, to uh, jam with you about this is going to be awesome. Uh, yes. Those were the most transformational nine days of my life. I, am officially a hunatic now i i've decided i decided there i'm like march and september every year until yes. the end of time unless <laughs> unless there's absolutely something that's like important family wise or priority um no i'm i plan to be there every time for as long like i'm like mama mitzi like i am there to spend my life there <laughs> it was yes. so and since being home i have i think we've got about five more people that are coming with us yes. <laughs> we're getting a big house yes. pretty yes. much because um we're bringing some people with us it's the the experience of huna and this is exactly why it happened you know like i went 5 years ago 
it felt level one to me at the time felt basic. I was letting other people's opinions get in my head and that was me being influenced. Um, however, to, I wish I'd gone to, I'd gone back sooner. And if I wouldn't have gone back sooner, who knows if you and I would be having this conversation. So I'm aware right. of the divinity of why it happened the way it did. And I'm just like, wow, this, to be able to access energy and feel it the way I do, um, Coco is very tapped in. My wife, Brittany, is very tapped in. Like they stop and talk to trees and they would say the things that they mess they message downloaded from source. And I believe it because I see their results. However, there was the skeptic in me going, okay, <laughs> I think Coco might have done way too many mushrooms. <laughs> like, 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 like certainly like there there was that 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 skeptic judge in me. And then going to Huna and experiencing it and receiving Maya Baiku, who have been um incredibly powerful aids in working with them and with in working with clients like i can feel them doing the work that i'm learning how to do you know it's almost like having a master teacher mentor in the invisible space teaching me in real time mm. how mm. to access my own power Every day was just the way it's stacked on itself, the way Dr. Matt, um, Kumu Matt has it designed. It's, it's very, it's flawless. And I realize why it's designed in layers and levels and why I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Level one, I wasn't ready. <laughs> and level two was like, I am so ready. <laughs> I'm ready for so much more and humbled that I have new gifts to play with and i'm using them every day i've been i've been practicing the the pule the and then feeling the results immediately like literally i put the pule out and trust it pule means um it's just intention and prayer so your listeners um can be on board with that and it's such a very sacred practice and you you set a grid and and you, you prepare the space to put this intention into the into space and into um effect and while doing that just immediately the release the and and so it is and letting it go to then feel that it's all and it is done that that feeling of it is done has it's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. My prayer before was very, you know, Catholic induced. Please, God, <laughs> help me not feel hungover, you know, or whatever. It was always like a. It was always, I only prayed when I was in a in a in a spot, <laughs> and I was like, God, help me with this thing, you know. Um, however, to feel this co-creative spirit and this knowing that it's done has it's been life-changing. And so every day, every skill, everything, I'm like, oh my God, I have to use that. Oh my God. I'm like, wow. I getting it helped me learn the NLP lessons like perception is projection, um, is interpretation and things of that nature. Like learning them from the Huna aspect has just created so much more wholeness in my knowingness. Um, my, my inner skeptic has been put to bed. And I am just here for the magic and it is unfolding on a day to day basis um, to, to wrap up that pule. I put, I, I did, I, I put in a prayer for a call, a call for those that could use my services, could use our services um, that we can truly benefit, you know, may they hear us and may they come and within hours. Hours. I'd also like to add, just in real time that we've not had any internet glitches since Lisette did her <laughs> magic shit. So. Oh, right. Right. Evidence-based, evidence-based yeah. results, all I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> our internet does a thing. Uh, you know, did a thing once upon Used a time. Used to do a thing. To yeah. do a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, just the, the, the willingness of the clients coming through the field um, just in, in the few days that I've put that out has been amazing and 
yeah, we, we are, we are bringing in people to serve. And that's, that's my, my vision is like, how can I make the world a better place? Not, not from a hero complex or anything, just from a place of like, can I help the helpers? Can I be of service to those who are being of service? I feel is my greatest gift and my ability to leverage. And Huna has just activated it in such a deep level. Like, yeah, I'm tearing up with how magical everything has been since then. Hmm. Yeah, so, so powerful. And mm-hmm. and like you said, every single day I've been chanting or using their puas or like today I did my first Apua meditation and that was a game changer. It's like, I need to yes. meditate on Apua every single day. Like that's, that's my, that's my vision going forward is that um, not only using this, like the Apuas are symbols um, that we call an energy with for the listeners, but the, the, the symbols are um, just, I think one of the most powerful pieces of Huna for me, because it's just, direct access to source and intention just quickly and it's there and it has this purpose and it's you just for me I feel like there's just like we talk about in school like there's this line of ancestors doing the motions with me you know it feels like that powerful Mm -hmm. sometimes and it's just like wow I just feel so blessed and honored that I was chosen to be a part of this halal or part of the school like it's just um it's like just the biggest honor of my life i think actually Mm -hmm. is is being a part of halal and and participating in like the hula dancing for me was Mm -hmm. so transformational i could feel my soul growing every step and like you know kumo too would just like look at your soul and be like do this you know (laughs) and you're just like oh god okay i'll try um but (laughs) he really, he taught, like, he would stop the hula dance class for a minute and he would speak. And to the lay person, I think it was just like, oh, teacher's talking, whatever. But when you really focused on the lessons he was saying, with each single movement of the hand or the wrist or the foot, he was literally explaining the universe to you through dance. And it was like, my God, this is literally a, like, what we're doing here is so divine that you could, if it's, it's like looking at a leaf. Sometimes you walk by a leaf that's like, well, there's a leaf on the ground, whatever. But if you pick it up and look at the veins and look at the ants on it and the sun reflecting off like one little bubble of water, like all of a sudden there's divinity in that moment. And it just, it was like the hula dance dancing for me was so, you had to face your shit in the moment and overcome it now to like keep dancing you know and it was so powerful I thought that was one of my favorite parts and of course just the teachings and the laughter and the energy and um, you know I think my vaiku were so you know I guess for me I I had been working with all these animal spirits like um, the bear and the snake and the eagle and like all these power animals would come in and do all sorts of amazing things for me and what ended up happening is that all of my nine nine animals um all of my nine animals they they converted into Mm -hmm. one of aiku so they integrated into one and so it was like all that power i was using that was just like a fraction of what i got and it was like oh my gosh okay wow that's intense, like so cool. And, and so I'm just so excited for Coco to go and just to like, like you have so many teachings and like you're already a mentor of mine. <laughs> um, and and I just I just see like, I just, like I see you smiling there already. Like, oh, Coco's gonna love Huna too. Like, of course, totally. it's just so, so much love there. And, yes. and I think I cried a lot. Like I just cried out of joy most of the time. I'm not sure if that happened to you, Lisette, but yes, I cried a lot of gratitude. Like my heart just felt so open since then. It's just like I feel like I'm just like a walking heart exposed heartbeat, you know. Um, yeah, and it, it's pure love. Like I'm constantly like in in awe and wonder and sharing the gifts and and 
Coco and I have been doing some work. We've been yeah. doing hope. Mm-hmm. We've been doing Ho'opono. We are mm-hmm. moving things. And, and just to be able to be of service with the gifts, like the gifts are meant to be shared. Mm-hmm. So to be able to come home and be like, hey, I see something's going on. Would you like to work on it? And she's always game. <laughs> yeah, last night we were by the fire laying down. She's reading from the book. I'm spitting up, crying, convulsing. <laughs> Let's do the work. Let's get this, this opportunity. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. But Lissa, you have felt like just a heart with hands <laughs> since. Uh, wow. Since. Uh, <laughs> That's so beautiful. It's so amazing. Yeah. I actually did a, a an energy session on my dog yesterday. Um, you know, she's got some anxiety going on with other dogs and stuff. And it's just like, I could just tell, like, there's such an energy shift in her. Yes. Um, and like, you know, just sharing with the family and, of course, my wife being at Huna this time was such a, oh my God, like our household has completely transformed. Like, and it's so powerful. And just like, she's a Huna tick now too. And it's just yeah. like, yes, this is like my dream is just to live in Huna world, you know, yeah. to basically, I mean, basically went to Hogwarts in Hawaii. Like that's literally what it is. Cool. I'm there. So, cool. September. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I do want to go. I do want to, we got to at least touch on Ho'oku because yes, that technique is so, um, I guess for me there, there's, there's, um, cause I've done it probably at least five or six times with clients now since then. And, um, it, it's, it's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. And it's just like, is, is this what? Like, yeah. and it's the same as mental emotional release, if not bigger yes. and easier and faster and cleaner and smoother. Yes. And I just like, like my mind is still like trying to like integrate, like, how is this even possible kind of thing? I know I'm, I accept it. I surrender to it a hundred percent, but there's also like, there's like, what? This is so amazing. And it, like, I just, I want to get your perspective on Ho'oku'u because I know for me in class, like my experience with Ho'oku'u was one of the biggest releases of my life it was like a past life trauma that i released yes um and i i just like oh my god that was so big for me so i want to get your take on on hoku yeah um i feel like i understand hoku um to the level at which i'm supposed to understand it and right now it's just a like suspension of disbelief and a surrender to it because it, it works. It just works. Um, that was what we did while you were laying in front of the fire. Mm-hmm. It, it, the ability to dissolve the baggage without all the words, without all the, um, and I love MER, like MER has been my jam. Like I, I speak, I speak the gospel of MER and then to learn Hoku and feel it like run myself through it constantly. Like in, for, you know, um, one of our teachers was like, I do Hoku every night and I do it in the morning or I do it whenever something comes up, but it feels like in the matrix when he's plugged into the machine and he's just like, I know Kung Fu. Like, that's how I feel every <laughs> time I do Hoku. I'm like, wow, I just let go of a limitation let's go. Like, um, my wife and I are starting a a podcast, um, a small plug, honest feedback podcast, and it's coming out in uh, two weeks. And I had to do some social media on it. And I had a, I I had all this baggage come up. I'm actually trying to relate to the baggage in this moment. So I could tell you what it was. Um, it's irrelevant. Uh, in that moment I did Hoku and what it lit up for me was this moment of someone called me conceited when I was like four because they said I was cute. And I was like, I know (laughs) like, and, and just like being a little kid being cocky, like probably modeling my brother or something and having this person who I looked up to call me conceited. And the lesson I got from it, the learning that I took from this root event was it's okay to know who you are. And you can humbly share mm-hmm. your gift and your light with others. And when that dissolved, 
I was like, cool, I've been, I've been posting. I've been doing, all of a sudden everything around social media disappeared. And I was able to share the gift of my wife and I are doing something cool that's of service where we get to help people move through their problems. Why wouldn't I share that? Yeah, so powerful. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think one of the, the lessons that came up for me in my release with Ho'oku'u in class was, was um, it was this really, like, I was burned at the stake basically this past life. I'll just get straight into it. Like, there was yeah. this burning at the stake um, experience, uh, which I, there was some trauma associated with that and all this stuff. Anyway, it's gone now. Mm-hmm. And, but the lesson was that every mistake or every pain, every hurt, like all these hard times throughout life or past lives or genealogical even, it's really made of light. In other mm-hmm. words, like the mistake, the hurt, the pain, it's really made of light and that it's and that it's it's happening for a reason and the reason is to learn and to expand and to grow and to nourish. And, and that was like, that was a big thing for me of like Mm -hmm. that every mistake, you know, everything that we've done in life that maybe regret or something like actually it was made of light. Like we tried our best Mm -hmm. and we got the lesson, like Mm -hmm. when we get the lesson, it's made of light. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we started saying to our clients, this isn't light work but it's light work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <light>. <laughs> <laughs> you only understand if you've gone through MER. Or, or <laughs> session. Yeah. Yeah. It's by, by no means is it not, is it an easy road to, to get through the journey? You know, the, there's the facing it part and that's scary. So you had to go, Oh my God, I was, I was burned at the stake, you know, and looking at that is not easy, but to look at it, from the light and to say, what is there in this for me? What is the gift that is for me that I can use in the future that is positive, that will forever change my life? And you get to take that seed and you have it now. Yeah. What a gift. What a gift. And to be able to do that in a fraction, a tenth of the time through Ho'oku, um, has been incredible. And, you know, I've, I've worked with a few clients and some of them are not ready and, or, or sorry, some of them don't want the energy stuff and that's okay. And for that MER exist, you know, um, I have been presenting, Hey, we can do it. Uh, I got this from another practitioner. She told me, she's like, I explain MER and how it's this you'll be totally conscious and you'll be there and you'll understand and you'll fly through your timeline and you'll get the wisdom and you get to really get wisdom from your whole life. And it's magical. It works every time, or we can do it at the fraction of a time, um, using energy and you'll still get the lessons and you'll still be there. However, it's much quicker and, um, the results are just as profound, which do you choose and giving Mm -hmm. them the choice and yeah, um, this, this um, practitioner was like nine times out of 10, they choose the energy one. They're like, wait, I could save an hour and a half. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) so I, I understand it to the level I understand it. I believe because I, I have experienced it, you know, um, and I'm sure as we level up and as we continue to learn, there's just so much more to learn. And I, I can only speak at the level which I'm taught and, and it, it works and it's yeah. powerful. And I still am not able to wrap my brain around it with words that make sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah, such a, such a magical time. And, and uh, yeah, I guess, I guess for me, like I'm, I'm feeling pretty complete here. Yeah. Like, what about you guys? Like, is there anything else you want to jam on? Is there any questions that like that I didn't ask you? Is there anywhere you want to go deeper? Like, Ooh. where are you guys at? I, I'm having one little ping, um, and my ping is, yeah, I'd like to ask how can we be? How do you see what we do being of service to the wildland firefighters? Like, yeah. How, 
how can we um how can we serve how can we connect um is there anything more that they would like to know from us like just speaking so the first thing is that coco's experience with the navy seals like it's not the same but it directly translates right and i think there's some discussions we should have in person and off air but what mm -hmm. i would love to see is incorporating retreats for wildland firefighters as a group so specifically for wildland firefighters so i don't know how many people you guys take on but you know a small group of firefighters specifically because our experience in Mexico by doing a retreat for them together was that the transformation just got multiplied because of the instant rapport, right? They've all done the firefighting thing. They all speak the same language because there is a language barrier to normal people. Um, that sense of community is so powerful for them. Yes. And the other piece of it is that this job is so different. And I, I think sometimes the wildland firefighters don't get it, even what they're doing until and it took me like over 10 years to realize like, wait a minute, what we are doing is that we are harmonizing fire between people and the land. And this is one of the most sacred positions in the world. Like the Native Americans, like one of the most important people were the fire keepers, the people that carried fire after the hunting, the people that yes. would burn the land and create this harmony of fire and growth and transformation. Like we're carrying fire and we're harmonizing it with the urban interface. And it's just in the modern day, it is a extremely stressful job. And so where this ties in is that this extremely indigenous type feel of a career taking the healing back to that and going back to the indigenous ways of healing it it is it's so powerful it's so like fulfilling to see that that warrior of fire or landscape or like that warrior mentality go back to the healing arts in a more cultural way that like it resonates with them in such a because they you have to be in touch with your gut or you'll or you're dead that's just the way it is right like you're cutting trees you're hiking in the mountains for 10 to 20 miles like you're around fire in like the most extreme way fire can express itself you're standing 10 feet from it like you're right there mm -hmm. and so they're super elemental natural psychic human beings they're just they get kind of closed off to it because the stress and so this type of work resonates with them a hundred percent. Like they want it. Yeah. People are screaming for like, when's the next retreat? We need it. So that's, I think there's more discussion maybe, but that's yeah. like, that's what I want is to see is us working together to facilitate wildland firefighter healing. Count me in. We're in. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I would. It would be an honor, an yeah. absolute honor to serve for those who yeah. serve Mother and Nature in this way. Yeah. The thing that just I'm crying because it's so powerful is that when these firefighters, as soon as they let go of their stuff, they're helping one another like instant. Like once they're, oh, my baggage is gone. Okay, I'm gonna go help them now. That's and the it exact turns into same this... experience I had with the seals. Mm. Like, we did week long retreats with multiple medicine journeys. And there were always, um, it was led by a seal. And, you know, we had gray days and the angels in the room were trained therapists in addition to retired seals so that their brothers were the ones bringing them in and holding them during, you know, pre, during, and post journey. And it's remarkable. Yeah, I agree with you. It's remarkable, the, the work and the healing that happens. Yeah. And they, they face it like, like they're just so strong, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's my life passion to do that with people, with wildland firefighters. So I invite yeah. you to be a part of that. We'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes.
Thank you. Thank you for the yes. invitation to um, connect today. Thank you for mm -hmm. the ability to um, to speak to your community. It's not something we take lightly. So um, thank you. Thank you. And yes, we are here to serve. Um, and we will talk offline to see how we make more magic happen. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for opening yourselves up. And really, I think this is the first of many podcasts. I really <laughs> hope you come back yeah. individually, together, whatever you want. Um, and just it's such a blessing and honor to be in your presence, both of you. And just I see you. I hear you. I see your light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and before we wrap up, I just want to make sure, like, where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? Like, you got the podcast launching. Like, yes, you know, there's um, expect Wild and Fire folks to reach out to you individually. Yeah. Um, and and like, where where can they get in touch with you? Fantastic, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I have a website uh, for uh, the breakthroughs. Um, it's lisettegallego.com. It's still my maiden name. And that's L-I-S-S-E-T-G-A-L-L-E-G-O.com. Um, and you can book an appointment, a discovery session. They're like an hour long. Um, social media, I'm at Lisette Rocks. Uh, we have the podcast coming out. It's called Honest Feedback. It's a call-in advice show. Um, it's amazing. Oh, Call in you. and ask for advice. <laughs> yes, uh, we we we're still a seedling, so anyone who wants to call in uh, anonymously, ask a question, we are here to tackle that. We're going to have Thomas on to help us. So get some fire firefighters calling us. We can have you come in and answer their <laughs> questions as well. Um, yeah, so we're doing that. Um, it's at Honest Feedback Podcast on all social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, that's me, Coco. I'm a bit more difficult to get a hold of. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been doing this work uh, for nine years and I have always been underground. It has been word of mouth. The work that I have done is, uh, the belief I've had around the work I've done is I don't know how to market it. It's so raw and real. And when I tell people what we do, it just doesn't land until you've done it or until someone who did it told you about it. So I don't currently have really a website. Um, and I'm not on social media. Um, but that needs to change. So... What I'll do is suggest people to go to um, emeraldgardens.com, emerald like the stone, gardens like your backyard, dot com. Um, excuse me, that's actually incorrect. It's emeraldgardens.love. Mm -hmm. See, this yeah. is how little I use it. <laughs> <laughs> emeraldgardens.love. Um, there is, and if they go to the contact page, they can send and they can fill out the form there that does get forwarded to me um, because I'm currently in the process of building that website and also getting some therapeutic support, integration support. We're growing the team because, um, as Lisette said, we haven't even had time to download because we have been in nonstop retreats. Yes. Um, so I want to be fair and say that. Um, for anyone going to that website, it might not make sense to you, but just go to the contact page, fill out the form, and either myself or someone on the team will get back to you as soon as we can, as I'm currently figuring out how to make this more public. So you're catching me at the very, very beginning messy phase, but that's how they can get a hold of me. Yeah, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. And, and you know, I think think there's the laws are changing it's becoming a much easier world to work in and I, i'm so blessed to be alive during this time and um and i'm sure it'll become easier sooner than later right yes yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. so any last thoughts before we part ways for the day hmm. Um, 
I would just say that whatever you're going through, there's always a way out, you know, and we might not be, we might not be the ideal practitioners for everyone. I, 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 I humbly acknowledge my limitations. However, I just want everyone to know that whatever you're going through, there is a way out and there is support. And if you'd like to reach out to us, we'd be happy to, to the best of our capacity, help you through something. And, um, and if we can't help you, we could make the best referrals possible. Yes. We have a wonderful network of people who, of healers and leaders that do a lot of different kind of work. And as you know, our teacher is incredible and it's, he's opened up, um, so much for us, uh, Dr. Matt. And yeah, there's, there's something for everyone and whatever you're going through, please reach out for help. Like if you're looking for a sign, this is it. <laughs> the help is there. Reach out. Thank you, Lisette. Coco, do you have any last thoughts? All I heard in my head was, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> That's all I heard. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time for just jamming on alternative healing all day long. And and uh, I appreciate it. And for everybody listening, please reach out to these two. Um, and I really look forward to our collaboration and everything that's going to be going on in the Wild and Fire community with these two. And it's just going to be incredible. And and fire season's coming. And yes. I just pray for you all. Bless you. We love you. Thank you for your service. And yes, thank you. We'll see you on the next episode. Yeah. Yay. Thank you, Thomas. Um,